What's up, guys? I have huge news to share with you all, okay? I have something that I have created that I am super proud of. I have written my very first book. It's called Going Fast and Fixing Things, True Stories from the World's Most Popular DIY Repair Expert. And you might think, oh my gosh, that's far-fetched. You're totally not. Well, yes, I am because it's in a book. And if it's in a book, then it has to be true. Surprisingly, it's also not a picture book. You know what I mean? There's actually like relevant information in here. All the information that you wanted to know about me but were too scared to ask, it is in this book. So I would really appreciate it if you guys would pre-order it right now. It comes out in June. Check out the link in the description box below. You get it on Amazon and a whole bunch of other platforms. But check it out for me. I would super appreciate it. But what I really wanna talk about right now is this car. It is called a BMW i3. As you guys may remember, I had a BMW i8 before, which is a lot longer and a lot sleeker looking, but this car looks like a concept car that somehow snuck its way into production. It is an awesome little car powered by an electric battery and motor, and it also is powered by a Rex. Rex stands for range extender, and there's a two-cylinder mini scooter engine located under the back of the rear seats to help extend the range. Unfortunately, this car only has about 140 or 130 miles total of range, including the range extender. So what I wanted to do today, now that I'm down here in sunny Florida, I want to hang out with a few friends. I purchased this car, and the goal is to make this my new daily driver and drive this car from Florida all the way back to Massachusetts. There's only one problem though. The issue is, is that I would have to stop every hour to fill up with gas in this tiny two gallon gas tank that this car has. What I wanna do today is figure out a method to make these aging vehicles a little bit more useful. Remember 10 years ago, this kind of range wasn't all that common. That was when the first Tesla Model S came out and that only had 200-ish, 230-ish miles of range. For a car this small, having about 120 to 130 miles of range was absolutely huge. But for today's standards, where things are further away, the battery has aged a lot more. Now that these cars are aging and they're a little bit more affordable now, 120 miles of range just isn't going to cut it. I wanna drive this thing back from Florida to Massachusetts Massachusetts over 1300 miles away and I don't want to have to stop every hour to get gas. So in this video we're going to find a way that we can extend the range and not have to stop every hour and give it well over 375 to 400 miles of range. I believe I could help this car a bit by adding my very own range extender with a twist to it. Let's find out. Then there's O'Reilly's across the street. Brothers. Sam, let's talk about this car for a second. So you've had this car for how long now? Rich. Yeah. What do you mean I've had the car? You made me buy the car. Yeah, okay. So you've had this car for, I think, a couple weeks now. Which and I know I paid some, for. Yeah. You did pay for it, so thank yes. you. Uh -huh. uh, and But there's a, a couple things that are darn perfect about it, which is fine. There's a crack there. I don't remember seeing that in the pictures. That was definitely in the pictures. Uh, there's yeah. the door handle. I think the door handle is in the back seat. There's this. Yeah, I ripped that off on accident. It was loose. There's, there's and I went this. to open the door and it I came noticed off. that. But overall, the, the it's not a bad car. It's kind of quirky on the inside, a little funky. The it back seems seat to work is, all right. Yeah, it works decent. It's not bad. We're currently in gas mode. So since I've had it, I've mm -hmm. only been taking it all around the city, and I've only used EV mode, period. Yep. Picking you up from the airport, Thank exhausted, you. all of the EV capacity, yep. and three-quarters of the fuel capacity. So yeah. This is kind of what you get in a ten-year-old <laughs> yeah, EV. Yeah, EV that uh, you, you know, that was very inexpensive. That cost fifty thousand plus dollars new, and we paid what ninety percent. A off lot less than that, right? SRP value. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I know you didn't wash it, so Definitely thank you. Did not wash it. Didn't spend the time nope. to do that, which uh, is fine. But I like the recycled materials on the door. So this is yeah. actually a pretty cool little car. So that's actually um, the the soft-looking stuff. That's pubic hair from an elf. Oh, okay, that's good. Out of juice, but we're gonna go to the gas station right now. We've got to find out what's going on with this car. So we have no EV range and we have 50 miles worth of gas. Yeah. So it's running on gas only right now. And you can't even tell. You honestly no, can't tell. The, the the range extender is quiet. And the the good thing about running on gas, is we know that there will be another gas station within three miles. Right. If we had to stop at an EV charger and do a level two charge. It'd be a nightmare. So it'd be taking four hours. You'd be here all day, right. 
Yeah. So the nice heart. Look, it has a nice radio in it. This thing is gonna be pretty nice. The radio is great. The overhead lighting is very BMW esque. It's yeah. got some really nice features in it that make me understand why it was over fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. But also feel bad for the person that's I paid fifty thousand dollars on it. Charge battery before leaving vehicle parked for prolonged periods to prevent possible damage to battery. Well, no, that's just I'm, a general. I'm assuming message. this is. It's basically saying like. Don't go leave it out in a cattle field hey. without charge on it. You, Rich, you've told me this a million times. Yeah. On t these cars that sit at the salvage Tell me auction. how EVs work, right? No, you've told yeah. me this. Right, right. I thought you, I you've been using the car. I've been using the car, but I got you at the airport and I used all the... This is... This, the, well, yeah, my Tesla's never did this, Sam. The Rivian yeah. doesn't do this. The Teslas don't do this. I have to unlock the tank, do you? No. You just have to be a man. Are this, you, are you a man, is, Sam? You don't have to unlock it. Are you sure, Sam? What's this? Oh, look, it's I can see it halfway. Sam, I don't think I want this car. But what's what's going on here? There's a leak at the back, Sam. What is a leak? I don't know. That's not our car. Are you it? sure? Rich, there's something broken. Broken Sam, the door. This is why you haven't filled it up yet. So you have to unlock it. It's a Mexican magnet. Listen, it's unlocked. The car's on. Don't you have Open. to push the push the button on the inside? We look like two old men arguing over what to eat. What? There's a, Sam, there's a gas button. That's what it is. There, there it is. Yeah. There you go. Did it work? Yeah. Oh, so I almost broke it. That's okay. Okay, Sam. Here comes the journey, all right? All right, so this is really important. We yep. want to know how much fuel this thing takes mm -hmm. because of... I'm sure you're going to explain it all. What? Okay. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me... Dude. That's all it takes? <laughs> there's no way. Oh, you're right. It, it, remember, this is a really small tank. Yeah. Dude, how long are you taking 1.3? It doesn't make any sense. Come on. You do so better than that. They must have not coated it. It's really not taking a lot at all. 1.4. I think there's a half so a gallon left. 1.4, we had about 15 miles of range. So that's about right. That's about right. Yeah. It's not coated. Okay, so this is good to know. So we know. Okay. So now you can fix that. So it takes an extra. Right, half point gallon. Four. This is insane, Sammy. That's $5 worth of gas. That's, what was the point? This is what this is what those politicians have been telling us about all along. This, if we just buy one of these cars. This is look at how much this we, is seriously. You spend fifty thousand dollars on the car. And you put five dollars of gas. Five dollars worth of gas in it. It's brilliant. This is the future the politicians want, Sam. Yeah. And even if you get it for the price we got it for, ninety percent off. Dude, it's like getting yeah, that's all I could put in it. Alright, so there you go. Yeah. Five dollars. Alright, Sam, what's going Why is that missing? Did that come with the car? It did come with the car actually. It's kind of a long story. It was there. Yeah. And then about 48 hours later, it was not there. And it's it's not my fault. Okay. I will, okay. But we're charging. And this is a nice little car, Sam. The only thing that's bad is it has, like, no range. That's the only catch about it. Okay, so. You know? Yeah. I mean, it does have the engine to get you going longer. Right, yes. The engine takes gas. Yeah. So what can you do to get more gas in the car that uses gas to propel its electric motor and save the environment. Bigger fuel tank. Where are you gonna put it? Look at this. Look at this, Sam, this is perfect. Rich, there's no, what are you gonna put in, two gallons? This is all Velcroed in. Look, oh, actually, that's not even Velcro. They just kinda threw it in there, I guess. So we can do this. Yeah, that's not even. Sam, this is easy, Sam. We could do this. And the funny thing is, is look at where we just filled the car up. Yeah in that corner all the filler necks right there you're right it's right there <laughs> so you you tap into the gas tank yes extend the gas tank let's do that therefore we have a fifty thousand dollar bmw then instead of having 100 miles range it will have what 400 almost 400 yeah between the between okay if this gets coated right yeah you have more fuel there then yeah. you have an eight gallon fuel cell plus ev charge it's almost 400 miles of range sam doesn't it defeat the purpose of buying a nice couldn't you buy like a cheap three series for less money yeah probably yeah so that's a good point okay so i'm very interested in this bmw i3 but the only problem with this car is that it has a very 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 small gas tank i i always thought that hybrids were the worst of both worlds very small gas tank as well as a very very small battery sam wait, wait, are you working on that car sam wait what are you doing yeah you okay. know you gotta maintain I'm your fleet i'm trying to trying to sh really but i really really like this thing it's not normally my style 
Uh, I'm more of an i8 person myself, but I think for the price, this is an absolutely fantastic deal. It's a hybrid. It's made out of carbon fiber. Where can you get that kind of stuff on a car? I think BMW honestly did a very timeless look on these. I think these have aged really well considering this car and this style is actually over 10 years old at this point. But what I want to focus on today, if I were to take this car, I would be driving it home. I don't want to have it shipped because that's going to cost way too much money. The problem with this car is that it has a very, very, very small gas tank and a small battery. I've always thought that hybrids were the worst of both worlds because you have to pit you have to fit two small things in one package. This gas tank, I believe, is only about, I want to say, one and a half gallons. And after you coat it, I think you might get to maybe two and a half. I'm not really sure. I have to find out more about this car. But I have a solution for it, Sam. Well, the solution is, is to leave it here. I'm actually going to put this larger gas tank in. I've heard people do this. Okay. And people don't really recommend it, but I think you could remove this frunk and put an eight gallon fuel cell in here. And what whoa, that'll, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I own the car still. Oh, but I'm helping you out. But then you said you're driving it home. Oh, oh no, no, Well, I mean, well, not home. And everybody thinks this is a shtick, Rich. Yeah, you no. come here, yep. like every quarter, mm -hmm. you say, hey, you know, I'd like that car. Right. You take it home, yeah. and then I wait payment for it like a jerk. Well, no, but and you- then you get pulled over. But and eventually, then, and then I guess, yeah, then, then it's the state's problem. Yeah, you just go to the state and they'll give you, they'll reimburse you. And then you do you. it so many times over, people go, this is staged. Yeah, no, it's not. This is all real. It's not staged. This is all real. But the good thing is this, this is a lot less than the RS7. So it's a it less was. of a loss. So there you go. See, it's not bad. All right, so after taking the front out, there's actually tons of room under here. And I think I could honestly fit this eight gallon fuel cell right where this is supposed to go. Now the only challenge is tapping into the filler neck and also tapping into the vent tube on the gas tank itself. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. I wanna jack the car up. Uh, I likely have to take off this wheel, remove the fender liner to get into where that gets filled up. But I think this is a real possibility. Hey guys, so this um, build is com build as I like to say is coming along really well so far. I have the fuel cell ready to go in and I also have the tank straps which are nylon to hold the fuel cell in. Right now I'm kind of out of my element because I'm not at my house so I don't really have the tools that I really need to make this a full, full success the way that I would do it. Uh, but honestly, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I hope it does work. There's a couple of problems with the car that I have to fix. Uh, that door handle's missing amongst a couple of other things. I don't know if I'll have enough time to do an oil change before I take the 2000 mile road trip back. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I have a bunch of stuff in the car. Uh, I have my backpack. Uh, I have my Crocs and a bunch of other things. And uh, just in case the car breaks down, as I'm heading back home, I'm gonna ship everything back in advance using ShipStation. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders in just a few clicks. You're managing orders like a professional. You're printing out discounted shipping labels and you're getting your products out fast. ShipStation works with all the major carriers. It works with, I'm trying to think, uh, USPS, uh, FedEx, UPS and even international shipping and you can compare and choose the best shipping solution every single time and they even offer big discounts on shipping costs and you can access the same postage and the discounts that are usually reserved for large fortune 500 companies and right now my people can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use offer code rich rebuilds for selling whatever it is you want to sell use it now or use it after you watch this whole episode but I am using it right now to honestly ship my stuff back just in case this car doesn't make it. Make ship happen. There we go. Perfect. Okay. One, two. Oh, this is awesome. Overall, this thing actually fits surprisingly well in here. It's eight gallons. That's literally four times the amount of fuel capacity that this thing has currently. Remember, we only put $5 worth of fuel in there, but I think this is gonna work out really well. Right now, I'm gonna pop out this wheel fender liner so I can get access to the uh, the filler neck as well as the vent tube. And uh, Sam managed to, to drive over some uh, cow manure, so I wanna be very careful on how I touch that. That's the vent tube right here. So this is the filler neck. That's the vent tube. What I want to do is I want to tap into this line. I don't want to drill into any of this here because that wouldn't be the great idea. Thinking about things probably shouldn't have uh, <laughs> filled the tank up first. But then again, as they say, the, the most dangerous thing here, are the vapors, not necessarily uh, the fuel itself. So I'm going to try to tap into this line 
uh, as safely as I can. It has to be a no cut, unfortunately, because you're gonna read into a lot of issues if you do that the wrong way. Uh, so I wanna tap into this line, but I need multiple reducers. So what I need to do, I need some tubing. I have to go from this diameter to this diameter, and then from that diameter to the diameter right here. That's what I gotta do. So there's a couple of reducers involved, and I have to do it actually on the same route this way too. So on this side, which is the vent, uh, the vent has to go from here and go to the outward facing portion of the fuel cap. These are all fuel hoses along with this AN fitting. As the saying goes, if you're gonna do it wrong, do it right. Okay, now, now the straps are in, uh, the tank is mostly secured in. Now I have to work on this fuel pump. What I wanna do instead of making brackets for it, again, I'm not exactly home at the moment. Uh, I'm elsewhere, so I have to make do with what I have. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use existing brackets. So right here, this was the prior front bracket. I'm actually gonna mount this right here. Make sure the in is facing up. In, bolt that right there, and I'm gonna have the out uh, that goes to the actual tank itself. So I'm gonna work on this. Unfortunately, this is too big of a hose, so I have the reducer that goes down to this size. Okay, so I think we're almost ready to fire this thing up. From this side, I have the pump, and that goes to the end of the gas tank. And on this side, this is gonna be for the vent that I'm gonna attach here. After that, I'm gonna secure everything down, put the battery in, and ready to test it. Okay, on these cars, a very common failure point is the door handle. I think this is a pretty easy fix. Just plug in those two connectors right there. And at the back, you pull off this grommet. You can see where that screw actually secures the door handle right onto it. So if you look at that side, you can slowly start seeing it make its way in. So I'm just gonna connect these back. And uh, that screw is what determines whether or not this door handle falls off. Very interesting design. I think on most door handles is actually two points of contact. This one's a little bit strange, but what can you say? 10 year old BMW things. Okay, so this door handle is back on. A relatively simple process. The only problem I'm running into now is I have to make some more adjustments. If you look, once you open it, it doesn't exactly go all the way back in on its own. And I've heard you have to adjust uh, this secondary piece on that side. But again, because I'm not at my shop, I don't have the right piece for that. I think that's an inverted star in order to adjust that. So I'm gonna have to do that a little bit later. So when I open the door next time, I have to make sure uh, that I'm pushing that back in. Okay, so I reset the trip to zero and there's approximately $34 of gas within it and seven and a half gallons of gasoline. I didn't fill up the uh, the front range extender tank that I just installed all the way to the brim. I put about seven gallons in it. So today, uh, I'm actually driving to Electrified Garage, which is approximately 70 miles away, and I'm not really sure I would have made it without these things. So I have the whole set of charge sets, and we're gonna see if I make it to EG or not. Okay, guys, before I got in the highway, I wanted to make sure there's no leaks at all, and there's no leaks whatsoever i don't even see those funny vapor lines going around this thing so the vent is 100 percent doing its job number two i think the gas is naturally siphoning into the tank because i don't really see the gas gauge going down very much so this is actually a really really cool setup there's no there's no fumes inside the cabin i think this is going to be a really good setup to get to where i need to go Okay, here's what happens when you use the state of charge when you're on the highway. Before I was going about 75 to 80 miles an hour and it actually could not keep up with the state of charge. The state of charge was dropping uh, somewhere into the low, low 60s, the high 50s. But now that I'm going 15, 20 miles an hour again and the range extender has kicked back in, it's trying its best to pump it back up uh, to the original state hold state of charge of about 75%. So it's actually trying its best. Again, when you're uh, when you're going at a high speed, the uh, the Rex or the small little scooter engine has two modes, it has a low mode and a high speed mode. So the high speed mode has a hard time keeping up with the state of charge when you're going at a high speed. But overall, I have about 27 miles left uh, in terms of gasoline. And I can understand why this would be frustrating for someone because Right now I have 61 miles left and I've driven about 52 miles. 
I don't think this would be very enjoyable, honestly. This doesn't really seem like it's 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 really uh, an enjoyable trip if you have to stop every hour. But thankfully, I have my magic button down there, and I'm going to push the button in a little bit to see uh, how much more range I could get. I'm going to wait till that gets down uh, to one bar so I don't overfill it and see what happens. Let's see, six miles. Let's go. Yeah, it's definitely working. Yep. There we go. 30 miles, 31. For the people uh, at home. All right, for the people at home, we are going to check this vehicle and see if it has any free on it with our equipment. So the i3 is prone to have air conditioning issues. The compressor just loves to not survive on these for very long. And the replacement is, uh, I think it's used. Yeah, like, but they started like $1,500 used. So. But I do know a guy. You know a guy? Yep, I know a guy. Okay. He'll get you out for cheaper. All right, good. So first we're gonna test the system to make sure it works. Like right now, I don't get AC. And this is Florida, and you kind of need AC in Florida, just saying. Okay, so first observation is. Yes. We have some pressure in the system. Good, pressure's good. Mm-hmm, so basically what we'll do is we'll just pull it out of there and see how much is actually in this thing. Okay. Assume, uh, can you hit one more time? Uh, so it's 750 grams. Yep. So over here in the sticks, you know, that's gonna be one point six pounds where is that how about in the city in the city yeah we're in city okay city i got six all right city six same thing look so look at 1.6 pounds looking for yes all right so what does that tell us after we get that back uh just tell us how much it's leaked out over the years okay um or if it has a leak at all gotcha um basically we all know the standard deal on air conditioning systems they have a straighter valve like a tire mm -hmm. um everybody knows well not everybody but electric vehicles use synthetic oil okay and the normal straighter valves that you purchase at the store are vulcanized rubber so if you're familiar with how that works, synthetic oil pulls the petroleum out of the vulcanized rubber. Mm -hmm. So you, that's why these early model Teslas, Elon decided to put vulcanized rubber straighter valves in them. Right. We have to thank him personally for all the money that we get. Thank you. For everyone that comes through here. Right. So you might be in the same boat on that one. We don't know. Okay. We're going to see soon. Yep. But basically we use Viton, which is synthetic oil safe. Okay, so we pull the pound out of it. It's supposed to be 1.6. So we're just going to fill it back up so we can go ahead and test the electronics of it. Okay. Uh, basically, you have to start with a mean and, you know, testing. So if you don't know how much is in it, not much help. So now we can verify it has a proper refrigerant in it and mm -hmm. we can move further if it doesn't work. And if it does work, you're good to go. So right now I turned on the AC and it's blowing cool air, but it's not cold. So we've determined... It needs a new compressor, right, Travis? Yes, That's why the car was so cheap. I think compressors in this thing are like 1500 bucks for us. <laughs> Unless you know a guy. But, but if you know a guy, if you know a guy, you know a guy. You know a guy. <laughs> okay, while we're hooking up the Autel to the i3 in this beautiful orange color, we have something else for sale. That's a beautiful orange color. Travis, you want to tell us more about this vehicle that we have for sale right now from EG? Yes, uh, I upgraded, obviously, not selling it because there's anything wrong with it. Yep. Um, this is a 2013 uh, base Model S with the tech package. It has third row seating from the factory, so it has the emergency escape button. Obviously, crash bar as well. 2023 plaid rims. I like uh, those. Yep. It's wrapped, um, and it's also stealth PPF'd as well. Um, I paid the PDR guy, paint, the paintless dent removal guy, to come and take all the dings out of it. All the dings and dents, yes, Four looking good so far. Yep, the, uh, these will not, those stickers from Try Garage, those will come off first. We don't right. want you riding around with those because if you cause, if you do one of those street takeovers, mm -hmm. where you block the streets for like medical professionals and medical personnel, they're going to come back for us. We don't want that, but we're going to get blamed for that. So we're going to take those off. All suspension components, including rotor, brakes, struts, uh, and it's a it's a coil car. All been replaced. Uh, we purchased a 90 kilowatt battery and installed it. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we have the ability to program the vehicle to be a 90 kilowatt now. It's 260 miles at 100%. Um, I'm getting about 212, 215 at 80%. Um, actually, uh, hacked the vehicle. It has a performance boost. Uh, it's from uh, 1400 amp output to 1600 amp output. How's the drive unit? Drive unit's three years old from Tesla. Okay. Even so better. it actually has been replaced. Okay. Um, the battery is out of 2016. Um, Delta's very low, I'd say 008. Uh, tire condition, those pretty good? Uh, those tires have about 500 miles on. Okay, even better. So, and there, there's the stock Pirellis. Basically, you see the headlights have been tinted as well. Okay. With uh, PPF. Um, 
Obviously, the bumpers are next in condition. Oh, okay. Nice. Frog's nice in good here. shape. Price. We haven't talked about price yet. I got 15000 or best offer on it. Email or try garage <laughs> because I'm just going to forward the emails to Chris and Travis. So yeah. what, what what email address should they, should they message? Send it to chris at electrifiedgarage.com and then I'll come harass Travis. Okay, perfect. This just is don't make me have to barter in between. Match made in heaven. Okay, perfect. All right, so I hear the AC compressor running, but it's obviously not compressing any air. It's just still blowing warm, so. Yeah. And uh, we're able to see that with our cool Altel tool. Oh, we use Altel. Nice, yeah. very nice. Where's that from? Uh, Autorescuetools.com. Okay, cool. Good friend of ours, Isaac, down there hooked us up. Awesome. Can't can't thank him enough. This thing is a lifesaver when you're dealing with EVs. Yeah, well, it didn't didn't save my life this time. It just told me how much more money I have to spend. That's much. why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right now we are at uh, Freddie Tavares' shop, and uh, we're actually going to do some work to this BMW i3. So what I was noticing as I was driving mm -hmm. was that the last pump that I had wasn't working properly. It was a very cheap pump off of Amazon. And when I push the button, it would literally take forever to get any fuel into that tank. Okay. Right now, I've upgraded the said pump. But what's happening with the upgraded pump is that there is actually too much flow. Ah. And it's starting to backfill ah. into the vent, which is we don't want that. I swear, baby, it's too big. It's too it's big. It's too big. It's too big, big. Yeah. right? Yeah, no. So, so right now, I'm at Tavarsha's shop. It's a shop that has lifts and a whole bunch of tools. And I feel like I'm in the right place for this. Maybe. Maybe, we're possibly. Gonna yeah. We're going to find out really soon. So we're going to change the design a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having uh, the pump and the fuel go into the overfill, we're actually going to put it directly into the gas cap. Now, I did not come up with this solution, no, by the no, way. No, no, no. This, this has nothing to do with <laughs> us. We did not come up with this. So we're just going to what the internet says to do, yeah. and we're going to do it that way. So yeah. if it blows up, it's like, well, the internet was wrong. This yeah, is well, that. Yeah. yeah, you can blame the internet. You can right. go to internet. Blame.com, right. <laughs> File a lawsuit. All right. Ready? Here's the wheel. What do you think? What? Dude, what is this? That's how, a... That's how, a how, yeah. How wide is this? I have no idea. Let me see. 155. That's so like a 150, bike tire, dude. Yeah, I've seen bicycles with wider tires than this. You know those fat bikes? Fat bike tires are wider than this. This is... This is so insane. I mean, it doesn't... It doesn't weigh anything. No. It, was it a 20? Was it 19 or 20? This it's is a pretty big wheel. Yeah, 20. Yeah, and it weighs nothing. So that's how they get the efficiency. Which is even that great. It only gets 31 miles a gallon. Okay, but like, does this... What, what happens if you have to brake real hard? Yeah, you just run into something. You rear end stuff. <laughs> which is why we have the fuel cell in the front. I want to attach a hose to that. Mm -hmm. Force water through it to see what the flow looks like coming out of the cap. And this should fit... Look at that. Love it's, it. Fits right in there. It's just to get home. Oh, nine years later. Who yeah. the hell? Yeah, well, <laughs> what's what's this thing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Homemade at, range extender. At oh the at goodness. the scene of the accident. Mm -hmm. What happened here? There was a gas tank in the front of his car. Okay, that's time. Should be ready. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want it coming out of there. So let's, um, so, okay. We have to drill all the way through. Uh, yeah. I'm glad we tested that. And this solves two problems. It solves the first issue that we discussed, but it also solves the issue of being able to close the gas door. Yes. Because in a lot of these cars, what people do is they modify this right here. And this is going to be a no cut build. It's going to be a no cut. This is a priceless. Minimum cut build. This is a priceless car that I picked up for $3,500. And the last thing I want to do is drill into this beautiful carbon fiber. Well, this isn't carbon fiber. I don't want to drill into this car too much because this could be worth money someday. Yes. yes. Just don't not know. today, but that, that not maybe today, someday. Not tomorrow. It's probably not looking good either, yeah. but maybe another day. So all people drill into this or some people actually remove this door altogether. Uh, when we do it this way, the shallow mounts, we are able to close this door. Yeah, and uh, we'll be able to... Well, you're going to need a little bit of uh, finger strength here, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you'll be able to do one it of clicks. these and then we'll connect connect that right there and, and then, you can still close the door because mm -hmm. before we'd have to worry about this was another like i think another half inch yeah to close to an inch up it would hit this and you couldn't close it yeah but because of our genius yes. look at this yeah I look, mean, this, look, is, this come on so if you ever wanted to bring it completely back to stock all you have to do is replace the gas cap and then that's it and then take the line out that's literally it so easy to this again minimal cut build 
Minimal cut, cut build. build. Yeah. Look at that. We don't actually know if it works, though. We, yeah, yes, exactly. We absolutely don't. I, I hope it does. So yeah. we'll leave it at that. Yeah, good luck. The fact that you paid like $3,500 for this car is just mind boggling because I'm looking at this. Like, it looks like nothing else. It looks like a spaceship. It Absolutely. Looks, like, it could be a brand new car. If you cleaned this up mm -hmm. and uh, you made it, like, showroom ready, like, you could tell people this is 2024. What, like, how old, how old is this? It's a 2014, so a decade old. It's a, it's 10 years old. 10 years old. It is 10 years old. And, I mean, you have really cool styling here. I mean, it, it's not for everybody. No, but, it's not. But it's still, you know, you got carbon fiber construction. The interior is all, it looks like a concept car. It does. I keep telling people this. This is, no one's talking about this car enough. This car still gets tons of attention driving on the road, too. Oh, I can believe it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it honestly, it looks like a big pissed off golf cart, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. <laughs> you go to the villages with this thing and drive in the golf cart lane. They wouldn't even just mow people over. They wouldn't yeah. even say anything. Right. By the way, I don't know this. Is this front wheel drive or rear wheel drive? Rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. Yes. Uh, uh, fun fact. When this car came out in 2014, mm -hmm. it was the fastest BMW from zero to 30. Really? So it ha does it have some torque from zero? It has some kick. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Got some kick. It's a cool car. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually buy one. I of these. think you should buy one of these. Yes, I'm you, buy should, one. you should buy one of these. It's cool. It's it's interesting. It's different. It's not like the run of the mill norm. Like, come on, Aston Martin. Who who would who would drive that? This looks like you got, cool. You got Aston you got the you know, Lamborghini. No, this is this is this is where you want to be right now. Yeah, this I is think, cool. I think so. Yeah, this car because I think I feel like you sold it. Yeah. several times over. Yeah, no, this yeah. is this is the car to get. It can like, only this, get so erect. This one, <laughs> this can only get so hard. Yeah, this is this is mine, but you could buy your own. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you have the room for it. Well, but I want this one. I want you not to have one. Well, I it's not, I like that. It's not that I want one. Yeah, I, want I, just, not I just don't one. want you to have it. I just don't want you to have it. Okay, uh, that gas station is closed. They just shut their lights off. Uh, that gas station is closed, so I can't go there for gas. Yep, yet another closed gas station. Okay, so this is the test. Right now, it is about uh, 10 o'clock at night. And, um, you know, I don't really know where all the gas stations are or even ones that are open right now. I have five miles range left and uh, I can't fill up anywhere. Like, all these stores are closed. Uh, I'm in the middle of a Burger King, which I also believe is closed. Uh, there's one car there not really doing much. But now I'm going to try to do the actual fill up process with the new setup and hopefully start seeing the, uh, the mileage go up. Um, so I'm going to hold this for about maybe like a minute or so, uh, and that should get me about half a gallon. So I'm just holding this right now. Um, this is where I am. Let me see. 30, 31, 32. So this is kind of what the range extender was meant for. I'm on this long, desolate road, and um, basically I have no gasoline left, and I have 26 miles of uh, EV charge, and I'm nowhere near where I need to be. There's no gas stations. Uh, it's 11.30 at night, as you can see here, and it's just overall, it's not a great situation. So, you know, as I'm driving home at night, uh, or even during the day, you know, having this range extender would, would it help tremendously. Having an additional eight gallons uh, of gasoline is is, uh, is definitely a huge plus. Again, it's late and I don't really know where I am, but, you know, that, that, that Rex with the extra fuel cell would be great. It's a shame that BMW didn't think to, uh, to have a bigger tank, but I, I understand what they were trying to do. You have to, in order for it to qualify as what it was, it has to have more electric range than gas, but um, I think it's a good solution. Not a long-term one, not a permanent one, but overall a great solution. Now I'm just gonna reach down, press my button, and then just add, you know, two more gallons of gas at a time and not even pull over to stop.